Okay, so this will be the final video of building off of a landform from a center line. But kind of like I, what I alluded to in the last video, this time uh, we're just going to focus on one side of the center line as being the topography sloping. But on the other side, we're going to have a retaining wall that's holding it back. Uh, they are technically independent of each other, so they can have varying heights and parameters, which is, I think, makes it a little bit more dynamic versus them being completely kind of uh, uh, tied together. So um, we'll show you how to, again, build off of the previous script of applying that on both sides to just applying it to one side and then have a retaining wall on the other side. Um, so yeah. Let's go ahead and jump into that then. So like I said, we're gonna literally build off of uh, this last script that was in the video on the non-uniform slope. So we'll have to first kind of uh, switch some things around real quick, but it's for the purpose of kind of uh, reorganizing it. So I'm gonna again get a, go ahead and uh, turn this stuff off and even disable uh, this one. I'm not gonna leave, I'm not gonna need, uh, or I still will need that part, but um, I don't need the merge. And I don't, I don't need the merge for that one. I don't need this one. So I'm gonna, I'll just go ahead and delete because that's not hard to repeat. Um, but from there, Instead of looking on the left-hand side, I'm going to actually look at the right-hand side of it. So kind of maintaining that more gradual slope. So I'm actually just going to replace this one. And then I'm going to go ahead and delete this part. I'll go ahead and rename this the right as well. And this I'll just do just because I know that's not what we're actually going to be using. Um, so again, I want to make sure it is kind of gradual. So let's just see what's going on with it. I don't want it, again, to be that steep. So I'll, again, extend it out to be much further, so like 0.75. And that should be enough to kind of give us, again, a nice uh, gradual slope. as it kind of builds off of that. Um, and so the next thing we want to do is, again, make sure to join this or replace those list items from here. So again, I'm going to go to list, list index, use the right-hand side. Let me go to list and replace items. So here's the items we're going to be replacing based off of this index. And use these actual points. Right, so that's what it looks like, right? So it, you can already see that it has this kind of uh, sheer effect, right? Because I'm not actually altering anything on the other side or the left-hand side. So those are staying perfectly flat. Um, and if you want, you can increase the density of points to kind of maintain a much uh, harder um, slope on that steep side. So I'm gonna drop it all the way down to like one, right? So we can see even in the top view where it's obviously impossible to see that way, but you can see just how close they are. So there shouldn't be a lot of uh, veering off. And, I mean, I might even kind of increase it or decrease it a little bit more. I mean, I'm pretty much done with the points. It's that easy. The next step is really just kind of moving our retaining wall. So hopefully that's it. All right, so that should be good enough. Um, oh yeah, I'll go ahead and get rid of that now. 
now I can drag this into here. I'm going to disable this stuff. And then I'll enable this again and turn it on. Just so you can at least see that product. We don't want to see all those points. But there you go. Um, so now we want to actually work on the retaining wall part of it. So again, we're going to take our grid of points from the center line and basically extend them up to match uh, our slope. And so what we're going to do is very similar to what we've uh, been doing. I'm going to actually go ahead and uh, copy these parts. Uh, let's do it like this instead of distance. Um, let's create a range of values. So I'm going to go to, yeah, so I pretty much just copied the graph mapper. Uh, so I'm going to go to range. So zero to one is what we want it to be, but we want to have however many points to also be the same range. And let's just make sure we have 58 points, 58 points coming out. Let's make sure we also have 58 numbers. So perfect. So I can now put that into there and say, move these points using that same kind of process. I'm also going to actually add the multiplier. So just like how I have the height for that, I want to do the same thing for this as well. So I'm going to use this as the values, multiply it, so we can start to see it um, working like that. Um, actually, yeah, we do want to use that distance mapper. So my apologies. We're going to use this one, though. Um, but we're going to use these points. So that's going to be our distance. And then we'll remap it. So I'm going to math, look at the bounds, remap them. And there you go. So now it's actually working uh, the way it should. Uh, so we're just going to make sure we kind of get them to match as close as possible. I'm going to have them go out a little bit further. I mean, I can quite literally copy and paste this to match it. I mean, let's just go ahead and do that, just so it's as uniform as possible. Um, I don't know. I think I can get away with not doing it. So I'm just going to increase this to 1. There we go. I'm just going to kind of get it to get as close as possible. There we go, that's looking pretty good. Okay, so there's our new, the height um, for the curves for our actual um, retaining wall. So from here, I'll make a curve. So I'm gonna go to curve, um, interpolate to get that. Okay, so there's one side of our walls. But we want to start to obviously get some thickness to it. So I'm going to now offset that. And I do want to actually have it go closer into it. If I want, I can have it go on either side. You can start to see like, because um, you kind of want it to clip a little bit of it, maybe not that much. So I'm going to do 0.5. So that's a little bit better. And then I'm going to offset it one more time, but just going in the negative direction. 
right? And now I can get rid of that. So that's pretty much the center line. And now here's the actual thickness of our retaining wall. Um, and from here now, we can create our ruled surface. So I'm gonna go to surface, freeform, ruled surface. Okay, so now there's the top of our wall. And now I can also take um, the outer one, which is that one. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, project onto my surface. So I'm gonna take the curve, project it down onto this surface. So you'll see how that looks. And now from those two curves, I can create, again, another ruled surface. So now we have our actual retaining wall uh, supporting or holding back the soil from that. And it's starting to look pretty smooth that way now too. Um, so I can go ahead and turn off all that stuff because those are just curves. So there's my solid wall, my surface. If you want to do it on the other side as well, you can. Um, it's as simple as actually instead of uh, doing it the other way, um, I'll still use that offset curve, but I'll use the original curve. So I have this one going into B, so I wanna replace A. And so it's gonna be hidden for now, but if I turn this off, you can see now we do have um, walls on either side. We don't really have to worry too much about it being at the bottom. But that way, we can start to have these a little bit more independent of each other. So maybe, you want the retaining wall to have a slightly different profile. So maybe there's areas where it's kind of sticking up above the mound, right? So you can kind of see over there that the slope um, gets uh, slightly different or that the topography gets a slightly different slope from the wall. Um, so you can have it start to act like that. It's probably not a good idea to have the retaining wall um, smaller than the earth mound that kind of defeats the purpose, but it could be interesting where part of the wall starts to extend uh, beyond the actual topography to kind of act as maybe like a seating wall in some cases. And again, you can apply this on either side or have multiple curves. So that way there's like a, almost like a slot canyon feel where the slopes are on either side, but then this area is protected by the retaining wall. We can see here with the contours as well, how that starts to look like, right? So pretty much they're completely held back um, using that retaining wall in this case. So this is again, the final one to, uh, build off of just a center line. Again, we're not doing a whole lot in Rhino. A lot of it's just being done in Grasshopper using a variety of operations. So that should give you enough kind of um, control over creating some interesting earth mounds, uh, just using a center line and a planar surface, or even with a slope surface. It's not that difficult to edit it that way, but yep, there you go.